We'd like to ask uh, Dr. Pamut to come to the stage. We are moving into an interesting phase of the, of the schedule for this last day of the conference. From tomorrow and Thursday and Friday, for those of you that are staying, we are going to much more deeper training on uh, Academy for, for SEMIS. Um, but for this last session after lunch, before we break for the day, we're looking at ownership, capacity, and sustainability, but also about how research informs implementation, uptake, and scale. So we've been talking a lot about the digital platform ecosystem, and that not just includes a software and the technology, but also the people and, and partnerships that we have around us. So Dr. Pamud is gonna talk a bit more about building local capacity, a little bit about the HISP approach more broadly so we can see where we've come from, to move forward, it's always good to know where we've come from, um, and uh, specifically the Sri Lanka use case. And then after that, we will move to Sidi Ahmed Jalla from the University, uh, from, the, from the Ministry of Education in Gambia, to talk about the University of the Gambia project, as well as a broader vision for capacity building. So I welcome Dr. Pamud to the, to the stage, and then we can move straight to, to Sidi afterwards. Right. Good afternoon to all of you and also warmly welcome our participants who are joining online. So uh, it's not the ideal time for a lecture, but I will try to make it as interactive as possible. But unfortunately, some of my slides, at least the initial ones, will be quite... Um, I wouldn't say theoretical, but uh, uh, there are some points that I need to highlight before I move on to two use cases, two case studies rather. Right, so what we are trying to have, talk about in this brief uh, presentation and discussion is about the topic of uh, building local capacity. Okay, right. So, first of all, I have a question for all of you. Capacity building and training. Are these same or different? What do you think? Speak up. Are you sure? I'm hearing different. Nobody says it's the same? No? Yes? Right, okay. So are these at least related? No. Yes. What's the relationship? Is something broad and another one is more focused? If that's the case, which one is more broad? Training or capacity building? Capacity. Training. Capacity. Training. Capacity. capacity, okay, fine, yeah. Right, so let's, I mean, like, there are so many different de uh, definitions of, uh, for capacity building and training, but, like, this is something broad, uh, 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 bro one of the broader, de broader definitions. So, basically, what capacity building means, it's an uh, overarching thing. It targets uh, strengthening skills, knowledge, resources, capabilities of not only individuals, it's about individuals, organizations, and communities, right? So meaning, in your case, you are, like what is your community? So I know like you have Ministry of Education, but provinces are there and schools are also there. So when you have schools, basically everyone living in the population is part of your community. So ideally, if you are talking about building capacity in the education sector, you somewhat also, um, there is overlap between the general population as well. Okay? Right. But when it comes to training, it's a more targeted thing. Right? As you can see in this very broad definition, it's again about building knowledge, skills, and competencies. But it's a very particular area. It could be an information system. It could be also about a particular subject matter, something like that. Okay, so I, I, I wanted to emphasize this mainly because, we, I mean, most of the time we try to emphasize this topic of capacity building, you only think about conducting trainings, okay? I have a question for all of you coming at the end of this presentation, so please be pre prepared. I actually want to know uh, any experiences you have on building capacity in digital systems. 
So please don't talk about training people on particular systems. I want to know about building capacity. So please understand that there is a difference. Is that clear? Great. OK. Fine. So I will briefly mention to you about HISP method of capacity building. So as, uh, if you can remember the very quick presentation I had to did, uh, do yesterday, I mentioned about what is HISP. It's a, it's a global network. Okay. It's a global network uh, of information management and more of a research network. And a byproduct of this HISP network is a DHSU software. Right? So we are not a software company. We are a big uh, network which is coordinated by a research institute called the University of Oslo. But we do software development, building capacity, which we are talking about, and supporting countries. Okay? So our main objective is to strengthen national information systems. So that's why the kind of partnership we have with the Ministry of Education is not to build a system for you, right? We are not building an information system for you. We are kind of teaching and training you how to maintain a system. So it's up to the ministry and the country to decide for what uh, example scenarios we will be using the uh, system for, okay? So that's something up for the country. Uh, uh, not for something for me to decide. And then we do collaborate with the ministries and to collaborate we have this HISP network and we have different uh, groups as we call it. So we have HISP Sri Lanka and we have uh, here in the audience Uganda, South Digitus or Mozambique, Western and Central Africa. So these groups are regional groups who work with the countries uh, in supporting ministries in building capacity. Okay. And then what we emphasize is building something together. We call it participatory design, meaning like you can't be sitting at the ministry and deciding for yourself what will be the requirements at school level. Okay? Ideally, you should also get school, I mean, zonal and provincial levels also in, uh, involved and you have to observe before building systems. That's what we try to emphasize. And you need long-term support. So education sector has a lot of experience in um, successes as well as failures with systems, just like if any other ministry, right? You talk to any ministry, you will have a lot of failures, which usually people don't want to talk about, okay? And this is mainly due to sustainability issues. You have systems, you have pilots which are successful, but the moment you try to scale up, things do fail. And we emphasize on these items highlighted here as HISP. One thing is action research. I don't know how familiar you are with this concept. So this is in a very simple way. It is not really, you know, like you collect some data and do a research. This is research and action going in cycles, right? So you, you do a research and there is action, right? And, you, uh, and from that action you learn and then it feedbacks into research. So this is what we thrive on, which is called action research, uh, which uh, uh, the, the HISP and the University of Oslo has a really long tradition. And the University of Oslo and the HISP has been uh, offering so many PhD programs on information systems. Up to now we have more than 75 candidates who have completed the PhD program and uh, we are happy to say that there are few uh, products of this PhD program sitting in this audience. Uh, and there are also master's program conducted by the University of Oslo as well as in collaboration with other countries. So for example, you have master's program here in Sri Lanka as well, uh, which started with a collaboration of the University of Oslo. So likewise, these collaborations is what we are promoting so that countries can really thrive on building their local capacity. Right. So with all this research approach, generally when we talk about research, we talk about publishing papers, right? So it is not about that. You have to even bring this uh, knowledge into the countries and you have to focus on dissemination and based on that you have to innovate. So for example, in DHS2 what we are trying to do is, based on our research, we try to innovate on existing platforms. That's why this platform has been able to survive for more than 30 years, right? Otherwise, don't think like whatever that was built 30 years back, people are still using. No. It's, it's always continuous innovation, uh, which is coming from research. This research, by the way, is not research on data collected. So even at, at this moment, if someone is thinking, when you enter data into DHS2, 
University of Oslo can see that data or something like that? No. The data belongs to the ministry and the country, right? So it runs in your country, in your own infrastructure, in your own servers. And here we are not talking about education data research. It is more about experience in implementing systems. So you implement system in Sri Lanka, right? And maybe it works in, for example, southern province. And there may be some challenges in northern province. So you, you try to learn why something that worked in southern province failed in northern. I'm 100% sure in most of the cases there is nothing to do with technology. It is more about social part, right? So you are not able to do that change management and that's why the system fails. Okay, so these kind of things, I mean, we can't incorporate that, right? We can't bundle change management as a uh, feature in DHS2, right? You see attendance, enrollment and everything, but you don't see change management module because it is not technology, it is something social. So these are the things that we try to promote using our HISP research approach, okay? Now I will quickly try to showcase you two case studies, both from Sri Lanka, one from health sector, other one from education, okay? So the education one is still ongoing. If, uh, the learnings from health sector is somewhat uh, more solid and mature. Right, so I will try to be brief as possible about 15 years back, around 2008, 2009. So this was what Prof. Vajira was trying to explain yesterday. Um, the Ministry of Health decided that to build capacity on digital technologies within the health sector, you needed what? IT staff. No, not only IT staff. You needed hybrid. You needed someone who has domain expertise plus, uh, I wouldn't say IT, more like informatics because we are talking about not uh, building, I mean, it's not about uh, repairing computers, okay? So it is more about information management, which we call as informatics. So to build this capacity, what they did, they had a collaboration uh, with the University of Oslo and Norwegian government to get us get some seed funding to start a master's program in biomedical informatics in University of Colombo, which uh, for med medical sciences, you may be aware that there is a special institute called Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, right? So with that, a master's program was started and it is running up till date. So what was done, uh, the staff, in the health ministry, specifically here, the medical doctors, they were uh, uh, enrolled into two years master's program, a completion on which uh, they were absorbed back into the Ministry of Health and placed at national and uh, regional levels, which is like district level. So with that, what they were able to do is to build capacity at all levels and to support implementations, digital systems. So this, with this, we were able to, because you know, like in the health sector, just like in education sector, we have a really big staff, right? When it comes to numbers. So this has been cascading and building over the last 15 years. Now we even have a doctoral program for some of these master's uh, students to graduate further, right? Because we need more research into what works in our own country. So we are talking about local capacity. Otherwise we have global knowledge, enough and more global knowledge, but we no need something on local capacity as well. So because we had this capacity, we were able to do something like this. Of course, I don't understand what is there in Norwegian. Um, Sophia can explain and of course I don't see Canute here. But basically what I learned is summary is here. So during the pandemic, when we were cut off from the world, the expertise that we had in the Ministry of Health was able to build a uh, suite of digital tools, right? It was a package for surveillance, monitoring, vaccine, uh, vaccination, for all that related to COVID-19, right? So this was built in Sri Lanka initially, and we shared this knowledge with our network. So within a short span of time, 50 plus countries were able to use this whatever we built. See, we could have, I'm saying about Ministry of Health, could have kept all this to Sri Lanka. I mean, this is our stuff, right? You, our usual way. We build this, it is ours. Had we done something like that, nobody would have known what was done in Sri Lanka and people would have just built things from the scratch, right? So this was not done because we shared, others benefited, and Sri Lanka was also able to be happy about what they did. So my recommendation for you, Whatever you build, don't keep to yourself. Uh, uh, I mean, single in a 
vidith thiyena ek gana kiyanna so basically uh, the thing is it's sharing is caring right always share and it will also uh, bring you fame right case number 2 given that i have very limited time is about the approach we have been following in building capacity in the ministry of education so learnings from the health sector is such that you need a solid core team so we have been working with the ministry of education for last 3 uh, years so if you ask does it take 3 years to build a system for us no but the approach was very different we wanted to train the ministry core team in how to build and maintain the system so that this also include how to manage servers how to reinstall a server how to take a backups right and how to kind of train users so it's it's a, it's a long process so this we have been doing and what you are seeing is uh, one of the trainings that we conducted on site uh, towards the latter part of pandemic prabhat like if i am correct i can't remember when this was yeah so we did both online and on site given our challenges and we focused on different areas including uh, requirements gathering customizations analyzing data and why dhis2 so i'm i'm emphasizing again dhis2 is a open source platform we talked about the challenges of uh, challenges ministry would have had if you have been locked in to a vendor so this is owned by the ministry and we are try, kind of trying to promote capacity in the ministry so that you can customize it it's a no code platform meaning like if you have a education person who has some bit of understanding of technology you are able to build this system so it's simple as that at least for 95% of the use cases you don't need to code okay right and with all that this i have already highlighted in my yesterday's presentation and i think it was emphasized by the ministry again these are the uh, two uh, subsystems that the ministry has been able to deploy so far but i know that ministry is ambitious in going to individual level as well and next 3 days is a nice opportunity to discuss about that in addition this also i have already highlighted 2 uh, days back we conduct information systems research and what you see here is a event that was conducted 1 and 1/2 months back in nigambo participation of ministry of education ministry of health and hisp network from around the globe so what did we discuss how to do research on building systems and implementing it okay so that nothing about how to analyze your data education data it was more about how to implement systems and we will be hearing more about this from ministry of education in a while finally i know that we don't have time for taking any questions but my questions for you all and whenever i have some free time i will ask this question okay so the question is you can think whether there are any examples from your country from your context where you have been doing capacity building on digital systems okay i'm not talking about training people on a particular system it's about building capacity on uh, digital systems right if there are any examples we are happy to hear and if there's a short break i will ask this question right that's it thank you so much